And so it begins, the finale of the Sadness Trilogy. It began with Indigo Prophecy slash Fahrenheit, haltingly went into Heavy Rain, and now we'll conclude with Beyond Two Souls. Hello everyone, I am Entom64, and I am joined by... The one, the only companion for the David Cage ride of extraordinary <laughs> emotions. It is I, the alchemist of digital. Hello, everybody. Fuck yeah, buddy. All right, we're just going to get right into it. I have not played a lick of this game. I've watched like a couple of playthroughs all the way through, but uh, most of it is gone from my mind now, so uh, let's hope I know how to ride this particular ride. Oh, man, I'm sure they'll give you tutorial nonsense. They always do. Uh -huh. I'm going to be honest, like, the time you asked for me to, <laughs> like, practice the game's controls, I spent editing Pulse Man for the channel. To be fair, that's a better use of your time, I think, to be honest. Yeah, um, apparently there's a, there's a tutorial later on anyway, so it gets you used to the controls and everything like that. So you'll be, you'll be, you'll be reading. So you know how David Cage has a big thing about wanting to be a movie director, right? Yeah. I think that, like, reached its zenith with B2S. Like, literally right off the bat, you have a celebrity here in Ellen Page, and by God, it's kind of uncanny how, like, the in-game character looks like her. Oh, man, the advances in motion capture are terrifying. Like, it, it's honestly as if they've just gone, okay, well, we like Ellen Page, let's just digitally recreate her and shove her in a game. Sure. At least it's not as uncanny as, like, the beta test for Heavy Rain. Do you remember that? Oh, God, that was horrible. <laughs> With the character who eventually would become Lauren, I believe. Uh, yes, I believe so, yeah. Oh, that was horrific. So tell me what you know about Beyond Two Souls before we, like, get into the story. Um, not much, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of, uh, remember it coming out, and I remember it being very, uh, divisive in terms of reviews and opinions, um, because it's just another David Cage thing, really. Um, and, I mean, yeah, I enjoyed, uh, Indigo Prophecy and Heavy Rain for what they were, but I wasn't really interested in B2S. Um, but, you know, I've read up a little bit on it and things like that, and it sounds relatively interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, the basic plot premise, which obviously I won't go into, um, because we're going to do that for you. Of course, but, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds... Interesting is the word I'd use. I'm, I'm a little bit curious as to how it works and the kind of the gameplay elements it adds in, because it is essentially just an interactive movie. But what do you expect from Quantic Dream, really? <laughs> oh my god, with the fact that we're using a friggin' HDMI kind of recording, I can see the sweat on the characters' faces. And given the fact that a porter guy just shattered a coffee cup against the wall, I don't blame them. Oh my god, it's the Green Goblin! <laughs> <laughs> it's our good friend, Willem Dafoe! <laughs> the motion capture cage! First we break his motion capture! <laughs> We've got to get him with the little bubbles on his face. <laughs> oh, yeah, just expect jokes you've heard in other LPs. I love watching LPs of David Cage's games. They're the only way to truly experience them, I feel, is through other people's humour. Uh-oh, here comes the fuzz. Oh, shit, it's the special fuzz as well. Like, we started off the game with a wee bit of movie-related drama right now. Oh yeah, well we've got you in an office, we're just gonna kind of take this nice car and FUCK DOORS DOWN! Shit! <laughs> like, you remember how Indigo Prophecy started with that whole murder shtick, and then the Heavy Rain just starts with like a father getting out of bed? <laughs> <laughs> it's so mundane, and it's just like, yes, this is a father going about his daily business with his son, and now there's a SWAT team kicking down your office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh Jesus. It's like, you've gotta design this house by the end of the day, or SWAT will just annihilate your family. <laughs> And I expect it with precision. You move that motion controller two inches to the left and you are fucked. I'm gonna be honest, do you really need, like, a heavily armoured SWAT team to take down Ellen Page? She's like 110 pounds. <laughs> like, ghost or no ghost, that's gonna be a pretty easy job. She is also quite frail, let's be honest. Uh. She's, not the, she's not the bulkiest of people. Bit of overkill, but yeah, alright, whatever suits you, Cage, whatever suits. Alright, be careful, guys, she may glower at you. <laughs> she may she may make an epic speech that gets the internet very roused. She, she's got a guitar and she is not afraid to play it. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus, everyone's dead. Ellen, what did you do? Ellen, we told you about this. The character's name, like the one Ellen Page plays, is Jody, but I would probably just call her Ellen Page for out. Probably. It's just like, oh, there's Ellen Page again. <laughs> oh, and there's Willem Dafoe. As you can tell, Cage pulled out all the stops for his casting this time. He went with Ellen Page 
and Willem Dafoe. The, the security guard was nice to her. That's why he was the only one to survive. <laughs> you're just like, oh, here's a cup of tea. I'll keep you for later. What did the computers do to Joey, though? They suffered needlessly. <laughs> This wanton destruction. Why, Jody? Why? I've missed this so much. Oh my god, it's got a storyline that is kind of ripped off of Memento. It's going back and forth, back and forth. Oh, amazing. Just uh, just as a side note, so obviously because we don't want to faff about too much, uh, I've been enlisted with both uh, the Beyond Two Souls Wikipedia, or the Wikia, and an FAQ. Um, thank you, Flame, for that, by the way, with the uh, little knowledge to make sure you go in chapter order, not chronological order. Yeah, yeah, for some reason David Cage got kind of bored with the whole narrative structure of his games and just decided to make you go back and forth throughout the timeline. Just like, oh, what's that? We shouldn't make Heavy Rain confusing enough. Alright, so, hear me out, guys. You ready for this? So, you're going to have chapter one, and then you're going to play chapter two, but get, get ready, okay? Hold on to your seats, bored execs. Oh, here we go. It's time for me to actually play a game. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm getting up. Oh, shit. Oh, my, I mean, that is the pinnacle of technology right there. How do I interact with stuff? Do I click? Oh, it's just down on the right stick. Because if you remember, <laughs> Heavy Rain had kind of an accelerate button where you could actually walk without holding a button down. And he was just kind of like, oh, okay, okay, I'm off. I'm going now. Okay. I'm just experimenting with the triggers here. It's just kind of on the left stick right now. Oh, oh, there's a guitar. I'm going to play it. Play it. Do I have button prompts for this? Yes! <laughs> of course you do. I'm shaking it. I'm shaking the controller. Oh, is that it? Oh, just... You got a very disapproving look off the, uh, the, the doctor there. Just like, no, put the guitar down, Ellen. I'm just going to explore and see what else I can faff about with. <laughs> what, what else can you do apart from going to see the doctor? Oh, actual button presses. Oh, look. It's a Casper. <laughs> Too spoopy, Tom. I don't think I can continue with this LP anymore. Oh, wow. This is actually kind of foreshadowing for the rest of the game. The book's on her shelf. We've got European architecture. Is that my kitchen book? Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. A design group? I really wish there were copies of Indigo Prophecy and like, Heavy Rain <laughs> on the shelf. Or like Omicron, the Nomad Soul. Oh, really going back. Bit of vintage Bowie there. Remember Heavy Rain had one of these things just playing on um, Ethan Mars' TV? Oh, yeah. I miss Heavy Rain. I think that's my favourite of David Cage's games. I think I still prefer Indigo Prophecy just because of how batshit insane it was. Uh -huh. You like a bit of what in your stories? I do, yeah. I like a bit of my flat trying to kill me. Yeah. Don't we all, did you? Don't we all? <laughs> Vintage Cage right there. That was his experimental indie years. The page is out of her cage. Repeat, the page is out of her cage. Come on, Jody. I'm coming, I'm coming, Mr. Doctor, man. So impatient, I just want to look at the monitors, God. Okay, so like, interacting with stuff is basically like pressing down on the right stick so far, which isn't bad, I guess. Okay, so it's more of a twin stick game. Yeah. Mm. A minute. <laughs> Can you imagine a twin stick shooter designed by David Cage? <laughs> What are you firing? Emotion! <laughs> Every bullet is intrinsic to the story. It tells a series of emotions every time it crashes into the enemy. Except every story is just kaboom and then they're dead. It is art. I want to sit on this red chair. Can I sit on the red chair? You better be able to sit on the red chair. Boo! Zero out of ten! What is this heresy? What do you think about the character model for young Jodo? Very creepy, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> not a fan of, like, CGI children, then, I guess. No, not really, no. I mean, they were a bit awkward in um, Heavy Rain, but now that we've kind of advanced to the point of this kind of uncanny valley... Well, to be fair, that was French children play-acting at being American, so that was going to be creepy no matter what. True, true. Will this amplify my ghost powers and give me a stand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be referring to the character we're about to be introduced to as a stand for art. I hope you don't mind. It's fine. It's just uh, we've got to get optimal Duwang up in here. Uh-huh. Have you uh, started watching Diamond is Unbreakable? I, I'm not keen on JoJo, I'm not going to lie. <gasps> I know, I'm going to let you down. I should have got Flame to do this playthrough. <laughs> he actually loves Beyond Two Souls. Bless you, man. Bless you. <laughs> should I shrug or say yes? Uh, shrug. Always shrug. Meh. Nah. <laughs> this test is boring. Let's start. Kathleen is next door, and she 
I'm gonna scare the pants off this woman right here. Oh yes. And see if you can tell her. Kathleen, you've no idea what's on the cards for you. You can do that. Nah. It's <laughs> <laughs> gonna be as apathetic and standoffish as possible. We're playing bratty Alan Page for this piece. Here we go. It's coming. Stand to power! Dun 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 dun. I call this stand Ghost Trick. <laughs> Away, Cecil! Not to be confused with a classic Nintendo 3DS title. Okay, I'm moving with the left stick and I can, like, change elevation with uh, the right. Oh. Okay, so she's holding a star. Ah, uh, that purple thing's the ethereal tether. So we select that. And boom, we are now a fully-fledged psychic. My god. If only it were that easy in real life. <laughs> she looks so bored. <laughs> it's like, yep, yeah, this is this is a thing that's happening to me right now. Can we I'm do anything thinking. other than the card game for once? Please, I'm begging you. Alright, square. Good stuff. Are we picking out the titles for the next series of Pokemon games? Like, Gen 8? Star, Square, and... Squiggle. Yes, Squiggle is like the third game. Yeah, Squiggle's the new and improved amalgamation of Star and Square. The funniest thing is, I don't think this even affects the outcome of anything. Oh, you'd be surprised. It's a cage game. It will do. Like, if you get one of these wrong, Aiden will hate you later on. Squiggle! She's so apathetic about the whole thing. Oh god, something else! Yes! Uh, c can I use Aiden, my ghost, my stand ghost trick, to fire a ball into like a cup or something? Oh my god, she's playing ball in a cup, but not using her hands! Oh, it's time for ghost powers! Ha ha! That was such a delayed reaction on her part. <laughs> That's because she's a paid actor, you know. So yeah, I'm holding down L1 and then pulling back with both sticks to do this. Oh, so it's like, uh, Wii Boxing. Excellent. Wii Boxing is the shit, mate. Oh, yeah. Wii Bowling, though, is where it's at. Ooh. I'm gonna destroy the room! Haha! <laughs> Never like film studies, anyway. <laughs> Media studies is just a cheap air level! What else can I destroy in here? Getting a bit drunk on my own power here. Jody, no! Jody, stop! Stop! <laughs> I'm gonna destroy this woman's life! <laughs> Paid actress? Yeah! Uh, goodbye, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I'm not stopping, Willem Dafoe! I am never stopping! Oh my god, this is wanton destruction. Oh, uh, everything. Everything will die. I'm going a bit crazy with the elevation here. Woo! <laughs> Control yourself, Tom. Jesus. I'm a ghost. I have no solid form. <laughs> I could be sinking through the floor and I'd never know. I could be waist deep in carpet. Get out of there! <laughs> and now no one will know where to go for safety. <laughs> My fire escape? What fire escape? <laughs> oh, this is fun. Why couldn't I have a destructive stand in other David Cage games? <laughs> I could have saved Sean. Jason wouldn't have been run over. Oh, sorry, I got the kids mixed up there. <laughs> They're both the same fucking character. Exactly, it doesn't really matter. Open the door, you say? No. Oh, now I'm pushing it together. Oh, I'm choking her! I'm oh, choking shit. her! Oh, shit! <laughs> goodbye, lady, goodbye! This is ruthless. I think I overdid my stand powers. A little bit, yeah. She's having a nosebleed, Tom. What did you do? The, the nosebleed signifies that the correct emotions have been tapped into. <laughs> the combination of tears and blood, it's, it's a metaphor for how much effort Cage put into his game. My trachea has been crushed! What took you so long to open a fucking door? <laughs> I'm dying! Oh, I just wanted to, like, call over Aiden and push Willem Dafoe out of the hug. <laughs> <laughs> just take over him during cutscenes. Fuck you, Dafoe! 